Hey y'all, it's Michael, and today I'm here to give you some nonfiction audiobooks recommendations. Let's just get started. This is more for people that don't listen to audiobooks as much. Nonfiction is a really great genre to get into audiobooks just because a really great nonfiction audiobook sounds similar to like a radio program. So a lot of the times it sounds like you're just listening to normal radio. It's like the gateway drug to audiobooks. I'm also going to give you the length of the audiobook just because it is important to know how long an audiobook is because you kind of have to know how much time you're going to be giving an audiobook because audiobooks tend to be longer to listen to than it's actually faster to read a book than to listen to to audiobooks. You can speed up the narration but especially if you're starting off I would not recommend that because it might be too fast for you. Um, I always listen to my audiobooks on one times so just because I enjoy it like that. I don't really want to go fast. I just want to take my time with it. So I always listen to 1x normal speed. I'm going to recommend you some short ones and then some great long ones just because the short ones are really great especially if you're starting off and it's just like good way to it's a really good way if you're in a reading slump listen to a short audiobook that thing will like get you one out of, get it'll get you out of a reading slump you'll be like oh i want to read or at least listen to some more audiobooks i'm going to recommend two books these are companionish yeah these are companion audiobooks normally i consider short audiobooks roughly between i've seen like audiobooks as short as two hours which is ridiculous but two hours to like maybe uh ten seven ish eight hour hours around there but then i would reconsider like a medium sized one 10 15 17 around there but when you get to like 20 and above you will invest some time into those but those are usually like hundreds of pages but they're so fantastic because a done a well done long non-fiction audiobook can really draw you in. One of the first books that ever got me into audiobooks is Columbine by Dave Cullen, narrated by Don Leslie. This is roughly 14 hours. Oh my gosh, this book is fantastic. The story involves Columbine. If you have never heard of this, it's basically a high school that one of the most infamous, sh uh, well, a lot of people think it's a shooting. It's a, it was initially set up as a bombing. Uh, that's one of the first things that I've learned and I was like, wow. It was supposed to be a bombing. This story involves uh, two students, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. The book surrounds them essentially because they're they're the ones that wanted. They planned the bombing, which turned into a shooting. They killed. I, I wrote it down. Within nine minutes, they killed twelve students, one teacher. They wounded twenty four um, others before they took their own lives. Fantastic if you're starting off with audiobooks because you kind of hear it as if it's a fiction, like a thriller fiction, but that realization will come that it, it happened for real. Like it's a true story. It's really heartbreaking. It's like edge of your seat intense. So he tells you about like the officers, about the perspective from the parents, uh, from like investigators, like students, teachers that were, that was there, their friends. Like it, it, it encompasses the whole community, the effects of a, the school shooting in American society. Oh my gosh, this book is done so well. It is incredibly violent. It goes into extreme details. I did learn a lot because not only did I learn that it was planned to be a bombing, it was also like, you know, you get this perspective that a lot of these school shootings are with like loners and like gothic kids and like they were being bullied. But Dylan and Eric, they were, they were like popular, like, well, yeah, they had like friends. They were like normal kids. And this was really insightful. And like, because that's what I thought, of course, obviously, because that's what they portray in the media. From the outside, everyone thought they were okay and doing fine. But inside, they were having an internal battle. Also, like a, a, another heartbreaking aspect of the of the story, the way the, um David Cullen takes the threads of the story and starts unfolding it and then weaving it together. It's, it's so good. It like that during that 12 minute part so intense like i mean i'm not gonna lie that i was like on the edge like of my seat listening to it i was like oh my god like just just it's it's so crazy um it's it's just so 
Well done, it's great. And now I want to recommend another book that's a companion with it that um, I've listened to recently, which is A Mother's Reckoning Living in the Aftermath of Tragedy. This is by Sue Klebold and is also narrated by her. A Mother's Reckoning is roughly 12 hours. This takes perspective of Dylan mom Sue Klebold and this was so fantastic. You can really tell that she opened up a lot about herself and she asked a lot of questions. Also see like the before, during, and after effects of what happened with the shooting. It's just really eye-opening and I felt as though she, it was like almost we need to talk about Kevin-ish, like both of these together. Like, like I said, I love her honesty about what she puts, what she decides to put in the book. But then also I really love this look into a lot of questions. She asked herself, is it my fault? Like, was I a bad mom? Was this nature versus nurture type of question? And like the backlash that she got from other people. Oh my gosh, that was so eye opening because it's kind of like what happens after Columbine with Dave, Dave Cullen. It's kind of like another perspective of it. I really think it's great if you listen to these like as a companion. I would start with Columbine and then um, A Mother's Reckoning. Really nice perspective of the story. It's just really fascinating, interesting, done so well. You could tell that there were research. The way it unfolds, both of these stories are just so fantastic. I would recommend them. Next I'm going to recommend you some really short ones just because I really enjoy short audiobooks because again like it's just it's fast and it makes it just, it's just really fun. The first one is a book that um, a lot of people don't talk about on booktube. And that's The Reason I Jump by Naoki Higashida, translated by K.A. Yoshida, and Dave Mitchell, narrated by Tom Picasso. This is roughly three hours. This book is about um, Higashida, and at the time when he wrote the book, he was 13 years old. He has autism, and this book is so great because first off, it's like a bit of 13 year old, so right off the bat is it's so heartwarming that a 13 year old wrote this book but the way the book is structured is also really great it's a look with autism and the way the book is structured is what people have questions is with autism like, why do i jump or why don't i look like i make eye contact when i talk or um why do i cover my ears sometimes like things like that um people with um autism go through and I also really enjoy that since he's Japanese this is a look as a look at something from not from like America where I live from another country I think it is so great uh, I just really like it because it also has this part these moments where it feels really childlike just because I mean he's so young uh, so he views the world really different on how me myself an adult views it it's really interesting and it's so fast it's like three hours it's it's really great the other audiobook i would recommend that is incredibly short it is four hours long between the world and me by Ta tanahasi coates also narrated by him first off he does a great narration i really enjoy it when the author narrates their novel just because you get to see how their inflection should be how they express things so i really enjoy it when that happens this book is like letters essays <laughs> Uh, with Coates writing to his son about growing up as a black man in America or as a black boy growing up to be a black man growing up in America. I, oh my god, this book is so incredible. I love the way that it's really insightful. I, I get to see this perspective that I read a lot about like with Malcolm X and all of these other narratives that I like I read in current time about things he'll have to go through growing up as a black man in America, like racism, prejudice, discrimination, things that people will think about him right off the bat just because of his skin color. So I also like that this book, similar to um, Atlanta, which you should be watching, this is a, like a plug for it, but this is something that Atlanta does and I think this book does too, is that it presents these issues to the reader, but he doesn't have a definite finite answer. It kind of is kind of like, here's the thing that's going on right now. What do you as a reader thinks about, think about it? Because it seems as though like he doesn't answer 
all the questions that he proposed because it, it deals back with his life. Like he, he's relating his life and then he asks these questions. I, I enjoy when books do this because it, it's like me as a reader is trying to work it in my mind and see how I feel about it myself. And I really like when he does that. Also, he writes so well. Oh my God, his prose is beautiful. I've read some of his other pieces um, from The Atlantic. Yeah, The Atlantic, and he writes so well. I, I he, his writing is so good. Um, I just, I love it. it <coughs> oh. I have seen also some people say that it seems like what he's writing about, it seems kind of young, like, <clears throat> since his son is so young that will his son understand this? Yes. Um, I don't think people understand that when, like, when you have to sit down with your, um, daughter or son and say like listen because we are not white i think it is true yeah he is he is young but i think that these are things that parents really do have conversations with their kids i mean i don't have any kids <laughs> i don't have any kids but i think it's true like kids They'll sit down with their kids. That episode of Black is like having to talk to your kids. Just watch it. Having to talk to your kids about why this boy or this black man got shot. Literally not doing it. Literally not doing anything. Like you have to tell your kids like this is what happened. People don't give kids m as much credit as they deserve because kids are really smart. Um, I just think that sometimes people don't think that and it goes over their head. But they get it. I mean... They get it. Another quick book that I want to um, recommend to you is just because of the narrator. And that is Not My Father's Son by Alan Cumming. It's narrated by Alan Cumming. By the book cover, the first time I saw this, I didn't even know who Alan Cumming was. I was like, who is he? But then I found out. I was like, oh my gosh, he's on The Good Wife, which I love that show. But he's also known as the villain on Spy Kids. Some people know him as that. But I am going just to recommend this book alone just because of Cummings accent oh my gosh oh, his accent is I could listen to his accent all day it's so good <laughs> this book is um Alan Cumming got invited to the show there's an American version of it but it's, it's called where are you from who do you think you are who do you think you are and it's basically like celebs looking into their DNA and seeing like who what their Antress ancestry is but this book also deals with like a father and son relationship and about the effects of how, what his relationship is with his dad is because he was not treated so kindly he finds out something while he's doing the show uh, I think it's just really it's really fascinating but then his accent just is like the icing on the cake so it's roughly seven hours so I, I would recommend it. The next two books I'm going to recommend are from the same author but they're also narrated by the same person. The first one is Mazulu Rape and the Justice System in a College Town and Under the Banner of Heaven. They're both by John Krakauer. They're narrated both by Scott Brick. First off, Scott Brick makes fantastic narration. His voice is like really gruffy and it just sounds so serious. The first one is, as the title suggests, it's about Missoula in Montana, the University of Montana. Their football team is like the Grissies. The book deals with football. This book looks at how rape within this town is really high. The people getting persecuted is really low. The ratio there is 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 really different. This book talks about how um, they're mainly women, uh, how these women get raped by these athletes from this football team, but there is no justice at all with these football teams. How can that happen? Like, how can, when they have evidence, literally evidence, physical evidence, DNA evidence, but these people do not get persecuted at all <sighs> blows Ugh. anyway this book is a li this book is graphic just because it does do research and that does include the police reports and the police reports do get graphic so i just want to let you know this also goes into the mindset of what a rape victim encounters during before and after rape in one story in here i, I was like oh 
my gosh, like that's your, that's your friend. How, how could you do that to your friend? Thoroughly research, um, and I really enjoyed about that, but it is just really fascinating. I, yeah, it's a fascinating listen. That one is roughly 12 hours. Under the Banner of Heaven is about 13 hours. Under the Banner of Heaven is a look at about Mormons. Uh, it's basically how it talks about the start of the Book of Mormon and like the current during that time, the current state of the religion. The thing about this book is it talks about the Lafferty brothers, uh, these two brothers who commit murder, uh, because God told them to, to do it. I think that's the first thing that comes to my mind when I, um, I talk about this book is it is really fascinating just because you see almost extreme side of a religion where they will do anything and it's fascinating and it also is a look at a religion where I'm not that familiar with like the start of it really great it is it's really violent too the next two that I'm gonna recommend are really long but I think they're worth your time because they're just so so interesting and fascinating and intriguing just everything a nonfiction should be. The first one is Helter Skelter, The True Story of the Manson Murders by Vincent Bugliosi with Kurt Gentry. This is also narrated by Scott Brick. It is roughly 27 hours long. I know it is really long. I think there's an abridged version of this, uh, but I don't know how long it is. I think it's like 10 hours. It's probably half than this. I was actually listening to this at work and my coworker was like, oh, what are you listening to? And I was like, oh, Helter Skelter and he he was like oh yeah and then we just started talking about um serial killers which was really interesting the Manson murders and it is a bloody oh my gosh the reason why I'm recommending this book is because if you're new to audiobooks this literally unfolds like a fiction thriller who done it well you kind of know who done it edge of your seat because it starts off with finding the body and this book is violent it is incredibly violent like oh my gosh it, it's it's like ooh, like it's it's really violent on what what these pe like these this murder these murders that they commit Bugliosi was the prosecutor during the case so he had a lot of insight with it and he was really good at like, it, it was almost a mixture between straight facts, but with also a narrative that's like, you could really see the narrative going on who these people were that commit this murder and like, who um, Manson is, like that, like, it, you can see it unfolding. So I really like that mix of narrative and these straight facts at the same time, because I think I, it worked really well. I, I, this book is really memorable, so I would recommend it. The last book that I'm going to recommend, uh, because it's already running long, and that is one of my favorite novels. Uh, last year, I talked about this book, and I think you should listen to it, read it if you want to. It's pretty long, but the audiobook is long too, but I think it's fantastic. It is The Warmth of Other Suns, The Epic Story of America's Great Migration by Isabel Wickerson, narrated by Robin Miles. This is roughly 23 hours long. <gasps> First off, Robin Miles, oh my gosh, she, I talked about her before, she is such a fantastic narrator. Her narration is just so great, she know it's, it's like someone, remember those times when you were like a little kid and your teacher read to you? It felt like that. The War of Other Sons is basically an account of the Great Migration, which, like I said before, on this channel, and I don't say it again because it, it's true, a, the American school system doesn't really talk about the Great Migration. Um, it's basically a max exodus of blacks from the South going to place, moving to places like um, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York. They were basically trying to get out of the South because of segregation, discrimination, Jim Crow during uh, that time because it ran from like the 1950s 1915s through the 1970s, so like World War II laps around that time. The reason why I recommend this nonfiction, even though it is incredibly long, is because it doesn't feel long at all. This book, I think the way it's structured, is done so well that 
you don't even realize that you're listening to a 23 hour audiobook. I mainly follow Ida, George, and Robert. So those, these three, um, people, they're from different times during the Great Migration, but they basically moved from the South. Um, each one is really different. There's, oh my gosh, all their stories are so interesting. It's, oh my gosh, it's so interesting. Robert, I think, is one of my, like, the most memorable one. Seeing his perspective as a doctor and trying to, overcome like discrimination and racism while he set up his practice is so like like just the story is just so good um and he encounters a certain someone and i i was i, I smiled during that part because like oh i didn't know that um because it, it, it like it popped in my head i was like oh that's that's who that person is. George is really interesting just because he works at the, um, at the railway system. So it's, it was great seeing someone that is like with people constantly moving on a train. Uh, that was really fascinating. The book moves so fast. Like it feels like it's moving really fast because she's setting up this story. So all of them basically are going from the south, um, to the west and the north. And the way it's structured, it'll be like, Ida's chapter, then George's ch chapter, then Robert, and then it goes back to Ida. Like, it, it, it re keeps cycling, and so the book feels really short because it just keeps going and going and going, and by the time I finished it, I was like, oh wow, I'm close to being done. It's so great. I also really like, now Wilkerson, this is a thing sometimes with nonfiction that's like a little gripe of mine, uh, was when the author injects too much of themselves in a story that's not really about them. <laughs> There's certain books that do this and it does, it's like a little arc of mine. Um, but I feel as though Wilkerson here doesn't do it. She inserts a little bit of herself in it, um, just because like what's, what's her drive to write this novel essentially? But it's not too much. It's just the right amount and I think it works great. I would highly recommend this because it is a topic that not a lot of people know about. Like if you say the Great Migration, no one really knows what that is. Um, but yeah, I really, I, uh, I, I love, I love this audiobook. It is fantastic. I would recommend it. Recommend it. So yes, uh, this book, this video is already long. Those are my recommendations for nonfiction audiobooks. I might make another video of this because I have a lot more. TBR wise, you guys, I am going through these nonfiction audiobooks so fast <laughs> because of my shift change at work i'm listening to even more audiobooks also let me know if you're reading any non-fiction audiobooks or if you have any recommendations for me that would be great until then i'll see you guys till later bye